8 299 V6 development of the Horton 9. The Horton 9 flying wing jet fighter is described in another section of this book. Max, the editor here. We interrupt this portion of the video to tell you that even though it just said that the Horton 9 is described later, I looked ahead in the manuscript and no, I, 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 no, it's not there. So I'm going to whip up something of my own to put there. Development of this aircraft was transferred to Gotha, and it received the RLM designation 8299. The V6 prototype is powered by two Junkers UMO 004 turbojet units, and the center section is rather different from that of the Horton 9, having been thickened by the addition of a shallow bulge on the underside. The jet unit intakes are straight instead of being upswept, as on the Horton 9. Gotha P-60A Twin Jet Fighter This was the first of the P-60 series of twin jet fighter projects and was designed by Gotha to supersede the HO-229 jet-propelled flying wing. The two BMW-003 turbojet units are mounted to the rear of the center section, one above and one below. The pilot and observer lie prone, and this arrangement has permitted a particularly clean design, since there is no projecting canopy. To provide space for the crew, the nose wheel is offset. The main wheels are stowed flat in the mid portion of the center section, which also houses the main fuel tanks. Armament comprises four MK-108s mounted two on each side of the cockpit. In addition to the turbojet units, the fitting of a 4,400-pound thrust Walter rocket motor was contemplated for rapid takeoff and climb. The wing has one degree of dihedral, and 45 degrees sweep back at quarter cord. Special landing edge flaps are permitted primarily to improve the stalling characteristics. For directional control, narrow cord airfoils are mounted near the wingtips at a predetermined angle of attack and are pivoted so that when not in use they can be withdrawn completely within the wing. The elevons, combined elevators and ailerons, are split. At high speeds, only the outer sections are used, whereas at low speed, the inner servo-tab-operated surfaces come into operation. Wing area, 504 square feet. Span, 40 feet, 8 and 1 half inches. All up weight, normal, 16,390 pounds. All up weight overload, 18,800 pounds. Tankage. Normal, 475 gallons. Maximum speed, 596 miles per hour at 23,000 feet. Rate of climb at sea level, 2,750 feet per minute. Endurance, normal, at 39,500 feet. 2 hours, 17 minutes. Range, normal, at 39,500 feet. 990 miles. Gotha P-60B Twin Jet Fighter The P-60B was an enlarged version of the P-60A with two HES-011 jet units. Wing area, 588 square feet. Span, 44 feet 4 inches. All up weight, 22,000 pounds. Tankage, 915 gallons. Maximum speed, 608 miles per hour at 16,500 feet. Rate of climb, at sea level, 3,740 feet per minute. Endurance, at 39,500 feet, 3 hours, 6 minutes. Range, at 39,500 feet. 1,645 miles. With an additional rocket motor, 
The all-up weight is increased to 24,200 pounds with 680 gallons of turbojet fuel and 3,950 pounds of rocket fuel. The rate of climb at sea level when using the rocket motor and turbojets is 9,850 feet per minute. Using the rocket motor to climb from sea level, an altitude of 30,000 feet is reached in 2.6 minutes. If the rocket motor is cut at 10,000 feet, the total time to climb to 39,500 feet is 5.8 minutes. And if the use of the rocket is delayed until the aircraft has reached 20,000 feet, a ceiling of 48,500 feet can be attained in 9.5 minutes. Gotha P-60C Night and Bad Weather Fighter The P-60C was a bad weather and night fighter version of the P-60B. It was necessary to enlarge the center section to house the radar and to allow the crew of three to sit upright. The extended nose necessitated the addition of two vertical tail surfaces. Armament was four MK-108s fixed, forward firing with 121 rounds per gun, and two MK-108s oblique, firing upward with 100 rounds per gun. Performance approximated that of the P-60B. As I said before, the Gotha P-60 B and C models have really conflicting configurations. Some of them have the long nose and normal cockpit, and some of them had just have the enclosed wing, which to me would seem pretty claustrophobic. Also, all versions of the P-60 seem to have this problem that my old YouTube friend Warbles on a lot pointed out, which is that FOD, foreign object damage, would probably get sucked up from the front wheel directly into the intake on the underside of the fuselage. Also, I plan to put in a proper section on the Gotha 229 when it comes to the Horton section. The present tense has been used for convenience in the following contents. However, this does not mean that an aircraft is in existence or that one was ever built.